Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to take a look at how we can actually use the new bindable feature available to us when we're working with collections of data. So what we're going to be doing in this video is actually building a form and if you want to see how to fully use forms as well to the max in SwiftUI then you should check out my video that I did previously around forms in SwiftUI to learn more about them. Now this video is teetering into the intermediate level but I do think that this is an interesting concept and can really show us the power that SwiftUI gives us so let's actually get into it so what I want to do is actually build a form where it automatically writes to our source of truth but we can also fully customize it just by changing our model so let's actually build out the first bit of our app which is going to be our section within our form so if we just go into here let's create a new file called models and then within our models file we're going to create a model for our form section so within our form, we're going to have a section and within a section, you can specify the key for that section, if it has a header and if it has a footer. And we're actually going to make this identifiable because we actually want to use this within a for each so it can generate it in our Swift UI view. So now that we have our section, it's actually possible for them to actually have items within them. So now what items do we want our section to have? Well, for now, let's actually just stick to text fields and we'll handle other UI components later. So I'm just going to create a form item and also give it a enum kind. So let's do that now. So we have our form item here. And again, it's identifiable because we're going to loop through all our form items. We have a key for it, we have our kind. So in this case, our kind is going to be the type of form item it is and our value that we're going to use to bind towards it. So in this case, the only kind that we have here is text. So this is for a text field. So now let's actually use our form items within our section. So just below your footer, if you just type out, I've created an array of form items here. And the reason why I've marked this as a var is because I want the Swift UI view that we're going to be binding to, to be able to update this property sources truth. So next up, let's actually create some form keys and we'll use enums to make them type safe rather than using key, rather than using strings. So let's create this enum now. So I'm just gonna type this out and as usual, break it down. Okay, so on our form section, we have this enum key and we have this case called general. So this is going to be one of the sections within our app, which is going to be the general section. And then within our form as well, we also have a form item key as well. So we have one for prefix, first name and last name. So now rather than us having keys as strings, we're actually going to update this to use our enum cases. So for our key here on our form section, we're just going to type out key and then our form item, we're going to type out key as well. And the reason why we're able to easily do this is because if you look, we're saying here that we want to add an extension on form section enum key and extension on form item with the enum key as well. Now you may be wondering, why do I have an ID and a key? Well, the reason why I don't want to use the key as the identifier is because there is a possibility that you could actually have duplicate keys with the same value. So by us using an ID with a UUID, this actually makes our IDs for our form section and our form items completely unique. Cool. So now that we've actually set up our model, now let's actually create our source of truth, which we'll use to actually bind our UI from dynamically. So let's create a new file called form manager. I actually want to create this form manager, but I don't want it to just be a class. I actually want to have a protocol. And the reason why I want to have a protocol is because I want to give users the ability of if I say users, I say developers, the ability to actually pass in their own custom forms if they want to. So they're not stuck with just using one type of form. So let's actually define this protocol now. So now we have our protocol and we just called it form manager impler, which stands for implementation. And we've got this property within it called sections. Now this is what we're going to use whenever we use this protocol on our class to hold all the sections within our form. And we've got this function here called load, which is what we're going to use to actually load our form on our screen when we want to. So now what we need to do is actually use this protocol on our actual you know, form manager that we're going to create now. So I'm going to create a form manager and then break it down. So we have our form manager here that is observable object and using our protocol. So we're using observable object here because we want to observe changes to our published property. And we're using our form manager implementation to get our implementation from our protocol. So this will allow us to just get that blueprint of what we want this class to have, sweet. 
So now that we have this set up in our form, in our manager with the sections, let's actually do this now within our form load function where we actually create the sections that we want to display on the screen with their items as well. So I'm going to type this out and then break it down. So the first section we're going to do now is our general information section. So let's just do that. So as you can see here, we've got our general section here where we specify the prefix item, the form item, first name and the second name and also the general info section which has all of our form items within it and within our section we've got our key header footer items and then we just basically assign that to our array of sections so this is our first section that is going to be within our form cool so now let's actually create a view that will actually render out this first section and we're actually going to add other sections in a second but just keep this simple we're just going to add in a simple section now so let's create a new file called form view and within this form view what we want to do is we actually want to create for now a source of truth for our form view manager so let's actually create this manager in here so now we have an instance of our manager within our form view so now what we want to do is we actually want to use a form within this view so and then also call the load function to actually load it as well so rather than having a text on here let's just replace that with a form so right now the form is empty but what we're saying is that when this form appears we want you to call the load function within our form manager so now let's actually create our sections because in our models if you go back to our form manager we actually do have one section that we've created which is our general section so if we actually go into our form we're actually going to create a nested loop so we're actually going to build the outer loop now which is going to be a for each loop that's going to loop through all of our sections on the screen and then we'll handle items in a second so let's actually create our section now so i'm just going to type this out and then break it down so what we're saying here now is that within our manager sections we're going to get the item and then we're going to create a section for it Right, right now in the items for that section, I just put a dummy text view here. But what we're saying is that within the header, if there is a value, then we want to add the header text within some text view. And if there's a footer, we want to do the same thing. So this is actually going to loop through all the sections and actually create sections for each one. So we just run this now and see what happens. We should see that we're able to see our general section here. But obviously we're not rendering the items within it just yet so the next thing we want to do is actually handle showing our items on the screen so let's do that now so rather than having this text in here let's just delete this and then within this closure block i'm going to do a bit of typing and we'll break it down again so within this we've got another for each loop but this time rather than us looping over the sections we're actually accessing the items in that sections where we loop through them in our for each and then we're actually going to access the kind on the item and depending on the kind of item it is we're going to add some kind of ui component onto the screen if you want to learn more about for each and identifiable then you should check out my video on the swift ui sessions playlist called breaking down identifiable and for each so now we're actually able to see our text fields on the screen. As you can see here, if we just run this on the simulator, cool. So now we have our text fields. So as you can see, we've got our static text here, which is saying some text field. And we've actually got a bit of a problem here because I actually don't want all these text fields that have the same text. What if I want to configure each text field to have its own type of configuration? So what if I want it to have the keyboard type, the context content type, and a title or whatever? Well, we can actually do this by actually adding a config to our enum case. So let's actually fix this and do this now. So if you just go back into, I'm just going to pin this so we always see this on the screen as well. So if you just go back into your model, so on our form item kind, we're actually going to create an extension on it where we keep all of our configs for each one of the UI components that we build on the screen. So the first one we're going to build now is our text config. So I'm going to just type this out and then break it down. So what we've done here, we've imported UI kit and we've now created an extension on our form item kind and we've got this new struct here called text config. So this text config is going to allow us to pass in a title and set the keyboard input type as well as the text content type as well. So now we want to use this config on our enum case as an associated value. So let's do that now. So let's actually update this to say config. And then we're going to pass in our text config like so. So now because we've updated our enum cases here, if you build the project, 
you should notice that you actually get some errors and that's because in our source of truth we haven't specified the config for each one of these text fields so let's actually just update this now and then we'll see what happens what we've done here is we've now specified the config for each text so you can see here for our prefix we're giving it a title of prefix and the keyboard input type default and name prefix for our form first name we're giving it first name name form pad and name and then last name is the exact same as well so now we're able to pass through our configuration in our swift ui view grab it and then configure the ui based on this enum case so let's actually do that now so if we go into our form view on our text this time we're going to say let config and then rather than having a hard coded string here we're going to replace this with our config dot title and then we're going to also create some new modifiers so we're going to say text content type is equal to config dot and then we're going to say keyboard type is equal to config dot input type like so cool so now if we run this in our swift ui preview you'll now see that our form has been updated and we're now passing through the title and setting it and also setting up our text content so this is really useful if you want to like do even more configuration like styles or whatever you can just create some kind of config and pass it through the enum case and then configure it in your swift ui view so now the next thing i want to do is actually bind the text field input back to our form manager and how can we accomplish this well, right now we've just got a constant with an empty string so whenever we type in these text fields it's actually not going anywhere so you might be thinking that you want to do something like this where you do item.val but this actually isn't valid and the reason why is because our property in our closure here is actually a string constant so how can we fix this well in order to fix this what we need to do is actually use the new xcode 13 binding syntax on both of our for each loop so let's do this now so on our first for each so our outer loop we want to add the dollar symbol and then on our parameter here section we also want to add the dollar symbol as well and then we also want to add the dollar symbol here and here and then finally on our text here item cool and now if we build this you'll now see that you don't get an error anymore so what we're essentially saying here is that we're saying that the identifiable object that you pass through the for each i now want you to turn this into a binding so now because this is a binding, we're actually able to read the value and also write back to the value within our source of truth. So this is really useful if you have four each loops where you have like multiple text input fields and you don't want to write an extra custom function to create some kind of binding. We are binding the values, but as of right now, we're not actually able to see what's in our form. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a button into our form that has some kind of action that we will use to print out and dump the data within our form at the current moment in time so let's go back into our model so now what i'm going to do is actually add a new config for our button so let's just do this now first so now within our model i'm just going to add a new case in for our button with a new configuration and an action so i'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down let's just start from the top which is our enum case so we now have our button config so this is the configuration that we specified here in our kind. So now we're able to actually pass through a title and we're also going to be able to pass through the action that we want this button to trigger. So this action is what we want to trigger when someone taps on this button. So in this case, we just specified an enum here action with the case submit. So whenever someone taps on this button, we're going to call our function and pass through the case submit which is why we have this closure here and if you want to learn more about closures they should check out my previous video about closures called communicating with views with closures so this closure will be used within our source of truth to communicate that this button action was triggered so now we need to create some new keys for our button and section as well so let's actually just add in some new keys so in our form section i'm going to add a new key called submission and then within our key here i'm going to add a new case for our formatting called submit okay cool so now we need to actually create a new section for this button so let's go into our form manager and below our general section here i'm going to create a new mark so we can easily separate this i'm just going to call this submit section and then within this 
I'm just going to create a new section and we'll break it down. So we now have our new form item with the key submit and we've got a kind of button here and we pass in a configuration where we say we want the title and the button to be submit and we want the trigger action to also be the key value submit. But now we've got this closure within our enum. So the whole point of this closure within our enum is to help us communicate back to our form manager in here that someone has tapped on the button and this is the action that they tapped on. So the action here will be whatever you specify within your configuration. So this will actually pass through to us, submit in this case. So now this just allows us to control in our SwiftUI views what we want to pass through in the enum if we had like multiple buttons or multiple like business logics that we want to, you know, have for a specific button. And all we have here is we just have a closure where we say weak self so we don't have any retain cycles. And then we're just printing out and dumping that whole section within this form manager. And then we create a new section here called submission. And then within this, we just got our items, which in this case is our submit form item here. And we just add this new section within our sections array. So now that we actually have this set up, we now need to actually use this within our Swift UI view in our switch statement. So let's go into our form view. And then in this case here, we're going to add a new case. And we're going to add it in called button. And then now we should get in a button. So the first thing we're going to have here is our config. And then we're going to have our action. And then now within our case, we're going to create some kind of button where we use our config and our actions. So let's do that now. So in our button, we're going to use the action label like so. And then inside of the action here, we're just going to pass back the trigger action that we specified in our config. like so and then in our label we're going to show a text with our config dot title cool so now whenever someone actually taps on this button we're going to call our closure in for our Edom case to now say that, hey, someone tapped on this button with this trigger action, so you should handle it. Okay, cool. So now let's actually just run this in the simulator and actually see if this works. So if we actually just run this now, we're not going to see this because we've not set as the main app entry point. So let's actually set this as the main app entry point. We're going to our test app project here. And then where your main entry point is, you want to set that to form view. And then now, in here, if we just type in any old garbage, so I'm just gonna to toggle this on and off. And if we hit submit, you should see now in your console that you actually have all the values that you entered. So we now have this for our last name, first name, we also have our value as well and also as well our prefix as well so we have all our information that we specified here so you can see all of that within the console suite so now that we've actually done this with text fields you know it, it's not uncommon for forms to not only just have text fields it can actually have other components as well so how would this work because we're not actually able to bind a string to like a toggle because obviously a toggle uses a binding bool so how do we fix that well what we're going to, need to do is we're actually going to need to give our form item more properties for holding the relevant data that they combine to. So the first thing we're going to do is actually rename our property here value to something more appropriate such as string value. And we can easily do this by just hold highlighting this, right clicking it, going to refactor and then rename. So now what this will do is it will rename all the instances of where this property is used. Rather than this being value, we want this to be string val. So any binding strings from our form will be stored within this property. So the next thing I want to look at is a toggle. And like I said before, because a toggle is a Boolean, we can't actually use this property here. So what we're going to need to do now is actually add in a new value called bool value. So let's do that now. Because we've added in our bool value and our string value, the way structs work with initializers, because we're not giving them a default value, you'd have to specify this within all our structs. So if I actually just build this now, you'll see that I've actually got quite a few errors. 
and that's because it's saying that it's missing that ball value. So in order to fix that, so you don't have to pass in a ball value, we're just going to give it a default value of false. And then also on our string as well, we're just going to give it an empty string as well, like so. So if you build this now, you should see that you don't get any errors because our structs have these default values in their initializers. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do is actually create a new case for our toggle and also a new config as well. So let's do that now. So underneath your button, if you just type out case toggle, and then we're just going to type out the blueprint for this struct, although it doesn't exist just yet. And we're going to call this toggle config, like so. So we, we are going to get an error because this does not exist just yet. So underneath your button config, if we create a new config called toggle config, And then within this toggle for config, we're just going to give it a title. So this is the label that you'll actually see on the screen next to your toggle in the form. So now what we want to do is create a new section so we can actually store more components in it. And now we also want to give our toggle in our form a specific key. So I'm just going to create a new section in our form called marketing. And I'm also going to create some new cases for our toggle called send marketing. So now let's actually update our source of truth to actually add in this new component with a new section. So I'm just going to do this now. So let's go into our form section and I'm just going to mark this section as marketing section. Cool. And then within this, we're just going to create this new section. So now we have our toggle item and our marketing section as well. So you can see here that the form key for this is going to be send marketing. So this is the value for that. And then the kind is going to be toggle and we give it a title of do you want to receive marketing? And what I'm actually doing here is I'm actually overriding a default value. So by default, I'm actually going to set this to true just to show you how this actually reads from the model. And then we create a new section here called marketing and we set a header of marketing preference and a footer of nil. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to add this marketing section underneath our general, like so. So as you can see, by us doing this technique with this array, we're actually able to easily move around sections in any order. So I can actually specify where I want this marketing to be. So I could actually move this to be the first one if I wanted to. So that's something for you to try out later in your own time. Now we need to use our switch drive view to now take into account this new kind of form item. So let's go back into our form view. And then underneath our button case, we're going to create a new case called dot toggle. And then we're going to get the config from it. And then we're going to create our toggle. And then this time, we're going to use this option here where we pass in the config dot title. And then the is on is going to be bound to our items bool value this time, not the string value. Cool. So as you can see in our text field, our text is bound to the string value, but our toggle is bound to our bool value. So now if we just run this and see what happens. So by default, because we specify true, our toggle is on, but I'm just going to type in some information here. And if we hit submit, You should see now, we scroll up our element here, which is our marketing preferences. Do you want to receive marketing? The bull value is true, which is correct. Our last name's been filled in, ads, Tunde, and Mr. But if I actually go back to our form and just clear the console and just turn this off, and I'm just going to change my name here. And if I hit submit, you'll now see that our bool value for our toggle is updated to false and also our information for my first name is now junior so it's not Tunde anymore. So this all works now. So if you want to actually add in a control such as a pickle or a date, I'll actually leave it in the final sample that I'll update on my GitHub so you can check that out. The main takeaway from this is that you want to make sure that your model matches the type that you want to bind to and if it doesn't exist then you need to add a new property one. So for example, if we want to add in the date property, which I will do on my GitHub, we actually need to create a new 
one here called date value and that's what we will bind to our date pickup. So the next thing I want to do is actually look at some basic validation and if you want to look at how to use regular expressions to validate a form then you should actually check out my video Swift UI form validation using combine. So let's actually see how we can handle this doing some basic validation. So what I'm going to do is in our form manager we're actually going to create a new enum state for handling whether our form is valid or not. So I'm just going to do this now. So this form state is what we're going to use to handle the state of our form. So we have three cases here. So we have NA, which is basically like nothing, which is our default state. And then we also have valid, which is means that our form is valid. And then we finally have invalid. Now this case that we have here is what we're going to use in our form to pass back to our view whether it is valid or not via a closure. So let's actually look at adding this in now as a default implementation within our protocol because we want all of our form managers to use this state to communicate the current state of the form. So underneath sections, we're just going to create a form state. Cool. So now in our protocol, because we've added this, we should get an error inside of here, which is fine. And we want to actually implement this within our form manager, like so, which is cool. Sweet. So I'm just going to move this underneath our sections, like so. And because we actually want to use this to observe the form state as to like what the current state of the form is, we actually want to change this into a published property. So let's actually add this in. And then by default, our form state is going to be NA because nothing's happened. So now what we want to do is because I've used this implementation, I actually don't want to, you know, add in a validate function within this form because you might not want to validate every single form. So instead of us actually adding in the validate function to our protocol, I'm actually just going to add the validate function specifically to our form manager. So if you just scroll down or if you just collapse this, I'm going to create a private extension on form manager, not the protocol, where we actually have a validate function to validate if our form is valid. So in order to check to see if this form is valid, I actually want to validate if the person has at least entered in these three fields here. So I want to check to see if this is not empty, the prefix, first name and last name then we'll say the form is valid. So this is actually just going to be a optional setting. And obviously we don't want to validate our button here as well. So we just want to validate these three things. So in order to do that, if you just look at our form manager, you'll notice that these three text fields are actually inside of our general info section. So we actually want to grab out our general info section and then validate each one of these form items. So let's actually just write out some code and do that now. So within our validate function, what we're saying here is we're actually going to use some high order functions to efficiently and as cleanly write this logic. So we're saying we want to get the general section. So we're saying get me the first section where the key is general. And if it can't find it, then it'll actually stop execution. And then on our general section, so what we're saying here on this line is that we want to get the form items where it is empty. And if this comes back as nil, then we can assume that they're all filled out and the form is valid. But if this actually does come back with a value, then it's not equal to nil, then we're going to say this is actually invalid. So now we actually want to call this validate function when someone actually taps on our submit button. So let's actually go into our load function. And if we find our submit, rather than us actually using this dump, instead of doing this, what we want to do now is we actually want to call our validate function. So let's do that now. What we want to do to actually see if this validate function is actually working properly is we actually want to show some kind of alert on the screen to tell the user that something's gone wrong. So if you want to learn more about alerts in SwiftUI, then you should check out my SwiftUI video called Alerts in SwiftUI. So in our form manager, let's actually create a source of truth for handling whether this alert is shown to us or not. So if we go into our form view, what we want to do is at the top of our body, we just want to add in a source of truth called has error. So this has error here is what we're going to use to toggle as to whether we show an alert on the screen or not. And then what we want to do is we actually want to observe the changes that happen to our form state. 
So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So what we're using here is the on change modifier. So we're checking to see if the manager form state changes, then it will actually trigger this block here and give us the new value within our form state. So because we have these cases like invalid, valid, and our default case, which is just technically NA, what we wanna do is we actually want to run some kind of logic. So in our code, what we actually want to do is that if our form actually does have an error, so if it actually hits the invalid state, we want to show some kind of alert. So inside of that invalid, what we wanna do in here is we actually wanna set our has error is equal to true like so. Cool. So now at this moment in time, nothing's actually going to happen because we're not actually showing any alerts on the screen. So underneath your on our on change, let's actually add an alert in to actually toggle and observe this value so that you actually see an alert on the screen. So after the on change, if we just type out dot. So now what we've got here is we've got an alert and we've got a title and we're now binding the is presented for that alert to our has error property. So whenever this is set to true, it will show this alert with this message. And then we've got our message here that we're gonna show as well within our alert. But one thing to note is that we've actually added a button within our alert here with the role of cancel, so a cancel button. And we're just going to reset our form state back to NA. So it's really important that you set this form state back to NA when someone taps the cancel button because when we actually show our form the state of the form is invalid but when someone actually taps on cancel on our alert we want to reset the state so someone can have a no go at inputting into our form so let's actually just test this out so we just run this now and this time if we actually just type in here some random stuff you'll now see when you tap submit nothing happens which is cool so that means that our form is valid but if i was to delete one of these and now hit submit you'll now see that we actually get our alert telling us that something has gone wrong so if we hit cancel that'll do that so now we actually have some basic form validation in now one thing that i actually do want to state as well is that normally what you'd actually do is you'd actually pass in an error via you know the actual enum case or you know via the view model or something but in this video just to keep it simple i've actually decided to just keep it simple and just pass in a string now if you want to learn more about how to pass in custom errors you should definitely check out the video i said before alerts in swift ui to see how to handle this so now that we've done that where we actually pass through our you know error state and handle the errors what we want to do now is that when someone actually taps on the submit button and the form is valid we actually want to handle passing back that data to our previous screens that are using this form i'm actually able to do that by using a closure and if you want to learn more about closures then you should check out that video i recommended called communicating between views with closures so in our form view let's actually create a closure for passing through our successful data so we just got our closure here called successfully filled in and the parameter here is a data which is an array of form sections that returns nothing so this is what we're going to be passing through our closure so now if you go down you should realize that you have an error in your swift ui preview and in order to fix this you just need to delete the parentheses and just do an underscore in like so just to give it a default argument so now what we want to do is that when our form is valid we actually want to call that closure so we can actually pass that data back to our content view so in our valid case here in our on change let's actually use that closure and then in here we want to pass in our manager dot section so this is actually going to pass through all our data back to any view that uses this form view with its closure so the reason why I'm using closures and I'm not using like some kind of view model or environment objects is because I just want this struct here to be dumb. The only thing that this thing should care about is the input, which is the form configuration and the output, which is the data that someone has filled in within the form. That should be its own responsibility. So now let's actually add this view into our content view and we'll add some logic in to show it and if you want to learn more about how to present views, then you should check out my video presenting and dismissing views in Swift UI. So let's go into our content view and we're going to need to add in a source of truth at the top here for showing our form. 
So as you can see here, I've just got a Boolean value which allows us to toggle whether our form is shown or not. And then what we're going to do is actually add in a button to handle toggling, showing our form. So let's do this now. So I've just added a button here to show our form being toggled. Now I'm going to unpin this so I can actually see my content view this time. And now what we want to do is we now want to actually use our sheet modifier to show our form and also bind it to whether it should be shown as well. So underneath the control size, let's actually just add in the sheet modifier. So we just say sheet, and then we want to use the is presented, and we want this to be bound to show form. And then we want our content in here to be our form view. So we just type out form view, and you should realize that you now get, you wanna use this second one here where we have our closure. So we don't wanna use this one, we wanna use this one here. And then now we should get our data. Now, if I just go back to our form view. Now, when we were typing out form view, we were seeing our manager, which we don't want to expose. So what I'm going to do is in our form view, we're just going to make sure that this is marked with private because we only want the context for this to live within this here. So we go back to our content view now and just type this out again, form view. You should now notice that we only see the option with our closure, which is all we care about, cool. So now within this, we now have our form data here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to dump this onto the console, well into the console I should say. So whenever we successfully fill out this form, it should now dump this within the screen and what we also want to do as well is we also want to handle dismissing our form view as well. So I'm also going to just toggle the form. So I'm just going to say show form dot toggle. So this will actually close the form because it sets this back to false. And then we're going to dump that onto the screen. So let's do that now. So we just run this, we'll get an error. And the reason why is because I've got to update this. So make sure in your main app that you're using the content view not the form view anymore. So now we should see our button. And what I'm just going to do is I'm actually just going to put this side by side so you can just see this easier. So now we should see our button. And if we tap on our button now this time, let's just close this canvas for a second to create some more space. So now if you tap on this button, you should now see your form on the screen. And if we tip, tap on submit, we'll get an error saying that your form is missing some fields. If we now type in here some information, you'll now see that when you open up your console, you now get all that information printed into the console for you. So you can now access that data from the sections if you wanted to. Cool. So now there's a few things here that I just want to talk about before we talk about the next thing. Well, you might be wondering, okay, well, why did I not add the dismissal directly within the form? Well, the reason why I didn't do that is because you may not want the form to actually dismiss when someone actually gets a successful um, validation. So we're actually going to move the responsibility of dismissing the form from outside so that this form view is just dumb and doesn't know anything else other than than passing in data and giving you some kind of output. But the next thing that I want to discuss as well is that we're not actually able to pass in a title. So right now, our form, what we want to actually have a title at the top here, well, we're not able to actually do that. So what we're going to do is actually give our form view the ability to have a title. So we just go into our form view here. Let's create a new property above our closure called title. I'm just going to mark it string like so. So we'll get an error here because we're not actually passing in a value for our title. Now with our title on this screen, I actually want this to be optional. I don't want you to have to add a title in. So what I'm going to do is actually create an initializer with a default value for this title. And also we're going to add this closure into our initializer as well. So the easiest way to do this is if you just hold down command on your keyboard and then just click on the struct form view, you should see an option here called generate member wise initializer. If you just tap on that, what it will do now is it'll actually generate an initializer for you. So let's just copy this and just move it below 
our parameters to organize it. And then we're just going to remove the internal because we don't actually need that. And we'll go to clean this up with control I. And we still got an error because it's still expecting us to pass in a title. But this time, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give this a default value like so. So now in our switch wire preview, we actually don't have an error anymore. So you can actually create a form view without a title if you wanted to. But the next thing I want to do is we need to actually give this form a navigation title. And in order to actually do that, we need to wrap this in a navigation view. What we're going to do is that if we just dismiss this and just close our form off, I'm just going to wrap this in a navigation view. And then at the end of our form, we're just going to add a close and brace. I'm just gonna hit control I. So now our on appear and our on change is now on our navigation view and our alert as well as our navigation view and not our form. But this time on our form, we're going to specify the navigation title And we want a navigation title to be the title property that we specified before. And then what we also want to do as well is that if this is empty, we actually don't want to add in a navigation title at all. Because if I actually just run this now and hit show form, you'll now see that we've now got this extra space, even though we didn't specify a title for our navigation. So what we want to do here is that we want to say is that if our title is empty, then we actually want to hide this navigation bar. So underneath the navigation title, let's just say navigation bar hidden is going to be equal to title.empty. So if our title is empty, then we are going to hide the navigation. So this is going to be set to true. So now let's just run this. And you can just see that when you tap it, you'll now see it looks like it does before and we actually don't see anything. But this time, if we actually go into our content view and if we actually give it a title, so we just create a parentheses and then this time we can actually specify a title. So it's going to say, contact us like so. And if we run this again, if we tap on this button, you'll now see that we have our title on the screen. So now we're able to actually have a title and not have a title as well with our initializer, which is great. So there is one final thing that I want to go through. And remember, I created that protocol. And the reason why I created that protocol before was so that you as a developer can actually pass in different types of forms into this form view. Because as of right now, this form view can only ever show this. And I don't want to have to go into here and create duplicate form views and edit all the you know, view model stuff. I just want this to be a view that you pass it some kind of configuration and it will configure itself. So in order to achieve this, what we're going to do is use an observed object. And if you want to learn more about observed objects, you should check out my video, Observed Objects in Swift UI. So what this observed object will allow us to do is it allows us to pass in some kind of source of truth, which will be our form manager, and it will configure the screen based on this. And we're also going to need to use generics as well so we can pass in any kind of object that is of type form manager implementation. So the first thing we're going to do in order to fix this is we're going to update our form manager. And this time, because we want to pass in any kind of form manager, we actually need to make our form manager implementation conform to the observable object. So let's do that now. So we remove that from our class. And the reason why we need to do this because we want all of our form managers who use this protocol to become source of truths where you can observe values to them. So they will all get this functionality by default. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually add in a generic to our form view. And I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. Okay, cool. So what we're saying here in our struct is that we're going to give someone the ability to pass in a form manager that conforms to the type form manager implementation. Because we made this protocol 
conform to the observable object protocol, we're now able to use the at observe property wrapper in our form view to listen to updates to any kind of form manager. So let's add this in now. So now we've added in our observed object for our manager so we can pass in any kind of form manager and I've just commented out the state object that we have before because we don't want to have to declare it within the form view, we want to pass it in this time. So you should comment this out and then just delete it because you don't need that no more. And then after you've declared your observed object property within here, what we need to do is we actually need to update our initializer to allow someone to actually pass in their form manager. So we're actually using our generic type here in our initializer and we just set it to our manager like so. So as long as you do that, you should be all good. Now, if you scroll down, you should have an error here within your Swift UI preview. And in order to fix this, all we just need to do is just pass in our form manager like so. So as you can see here, now we're not just restricted to having just one type of form manager. We can pass in any kind of form manager that we want. So now let's just go into our content view and we should have some errors here so what we want to do now is we actually want to create an instance of the form manager that we had before up top here as a source of truth so let's do that now so now that we have our source of truth in this file what we want to do is we want to pass this form manager into this form view so let's add in the extra argument and then we're just going to say here contact form manager like so and if you build this you shouldn't have an error anymore so now if we actually run this you should see that our form looks the exact same and if we just start typing in you should see that we now get all the information that we entered within this manager like so. So we've done an example of what it looks like with the contact us, but what if I want to create another type of form like a login form? So let's actually look at how we can do this now. So in our model, what I'm just going to do is I'm actually going to add in some more cases for our possible type of inputs. So this time it's going to be for our keys and our section. So I'm going to create a new section for login and then I'm going to add a new key called username and password. Now for our password we actually don't want this to be exposed because if someone's typing in here we don't want someone to actually see their password like so. So what we're actually going to do is create another new component kind called secure text so let's go into our kind and we're going to use case and it's going to be secure. And for the config, we're just going to reuse our text config. Now, because our secure field is actually bound to a string, we actually don't need to add a new property in here for that. Instead, we can just reuse this property here called string value. So now what we do need to do though, is we now need to update our form view in Swift UI to now take into account this new secure text. So let's do that now. So in our form view, if you just go below your toggle, we wanna create a new case called secure text. And we want this to be let config. Now what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to copy this text field here. And I'm just going to paste it. And then rather than just being a text field, I'm also going to change this to be a secure field, like so. So now we'll get the secure field and our value will be bound to our source of truth. And then actually, let me close this off. So what we want to do now for our login is we actually want to create a new login form manager. So let's create a new file called login form manager. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy our class and our extension from our form manager into this file. So we're not going to copy the protocol and the enum because we don't need to repeat this. So let's just copy everything from below this final class here. So you scroll down and you just want to copy all of this. And then let's just paste that within our form manager like so. And then let's rename this to be login form manager.
So we're going to work on the validation in a second, but the first thing I want to do is just reconfigure how our form is built. Now in our login form, we're just going to have one section. So let's just start removing form items that we don't need. So let's first of all, just remove this. And then for our first name item, we're just going to change this to be username for the key. And then this is going to say username rather than first name. And then this keyboard input type here, this is going to be email address. And then this text content type is going to be username. And then for our second name, we're going to change this to be, well actually we're going to change the first one to be username. So rename that to username. And then the second one, we want this to be password and then we want the key here password and then we want the kind to be secure text not text because we want to use the secure text field and then we want the title to be displayed here to be password but then now we want the keyboard input here to be default because there isn't one for password and we want a text content type to be password, cool. So now within our section here, we actually wanna have a button that we'll use for actually validating our form. So let's just copy this submit form item. And then we're just going to leave this as submit. So we're going for submit form item. This key is going to be submit. The button comp is going to be, and then the trigger action is going to be submit as well. And that's that. So now for our section, we're going to change this to be login. And then the header is just going to be login details. And then we're just going to say here, please enter in your login details. Please enter in your login details. And then this array now, because obviously these don't exist anymore, we're going to replace it with username, password, and submit form item. This is going to be username, password, submit. And then everything below here, all these other items, we're just going to delete them because we don't need it, because we only want the one section. And then within our sections array, we're going to use our general info section but we're going to rename this to be login section, like so. And we only need that one array, like so. Okay, cool, sweet. So now we have our one section here for our login form. Now the next thing I wanna do is that within our validate function within this login form manager, I just wanna add in some logic that checks to see if the username and password fields are not empty. So I'm just gonna type this out and then we'll break it down. So now what we're saying here is that in our validate function, we're going to get the first section where it matches the key login. So you can see here, our section key here is login. And then what we're going to do is we're going to access the items lazily, because it's just this is just a way to filter and to loop through collections more efficiently in Swift. So what we're going to say here, we're going to get the items lazily loaded and we're going to filter out the submit key. Now the reason why I'm doing this, is because if you remember, when we created our submit form, it actually does have a string value. So we actually don't want to validate the button because the button's never going to have some kind of value. And instead, we're going to filter out the submit button. So any, we're going to filter out any item that is not submit. And then what we do is we say we want to get the first item in the array. So in this case, it's going to be our username and password. We're going to check to see if it comes back with a value. So if it does come, with a, come back with a value, then it's not nil. So this will evaluate to false. But if it does come back, if it doesn't come back with a value and it is nil, then the form is empty. And then we're going to change the form state. So if it is empty, we're going to say the form is valid or else it's not valid. So now what we want to do is we want to create an instance of this within our content view. So let's go into our content view and create an instance of this login form manager. So now we've created an instance of this login form manager. What we're actually able to do now is we're actually able to swap between different form managers because of our observed object and our generic from before. So because of this generic and our observed object, we're able to pass this in to, our, to this view and let it configure itself. 
So let's just go out here. And rather than, being, rather than this being contact us, we're going to now just change this to be login. And we're going to change the manager to be the login form manager, like so. And then we're just going to run this and see what happens. So now, if we tap on this, you'll now see that you actually get your login view. And if we try to submit this, we get an error because it's empty. But if we actually run this, and I'm just going to enter in any old nonsense, you'll see also for our password, we also get the new secure entry text field. And if I hit submit, you'll now see that the form is valid and it will dismiss itself. So now what we're able to do is swap between our different forms. So let's just go back to our contact us form. And then let's just run this. And now we have our contact us view. So as you can see here, we've actually got our own form view component where we're able to pass in a title and we've got our own managers where we're able to pass in any kind of manager and perform validation, configure the screen and bind it to some kind of source of truth. Okay, that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.